Hi, 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 and welcome to Elena Does Audio Stuff. In this episode, I will tell you everything there is to know about Q. What is Q? How does it work in Ableton Live? And how you can use it in live performance and recording. So watch this video. <laughs> So what is Q? So Q is something in a jaw that allows us to select where do all the outputs go. So Q allows me to select example output number one is only for me to hear and output number two is for everybody else to hear. So Q allows me to preview sounds on a track as well as in the browser window while performing. But also Q allows me to example set up individual outputs for every single player in a band so they can hear their own mix while they're playing. So example drummer might only want to hear the guitarist and the bassist but they don't want to hear the vocali vo vocalist. Vocalist? 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 How to say it? Vocalist? The, the singer. So that is what Q is. So let's go now in Ableton Live and I will show you how to set it up and how, how does it work? Yeah? Okay, so firstly, let's go into Ableton Live. And the first things first, we need to make sure that we can see the I.O. area. Where you can find that is that you go to the right corner, lower corner, and there you see the little I.O. You click from that. Now also activate sends and returns just for the uh, later purposes. Firstly, we're gonna be looking at Q out and master out. So I'm using Scarlett 2i2 interface and in this interface I have two outputs. So when you go in the back of the interface there's two little holes. So those are the outputs of the interface. So in this one I cannot select the uh, headphone output as one option. I need to select the output one on output two. So usually if you go to a uh, venue as a live performer you use both of them so you have stereo but because we want to cue we're gonna have the other sound on our left ear and other one on the right ear so that means that if you're performing using just two outputs you need to play your set mono back to the back to the like in there to the, the to the audiences if you do dance music that's absolutely fine but example the music that i perform i want to perform it in stereo so i would need another interface or another way of having more outputs if i click from here you see it says one and two so that's both of them together so that's stereo or we have one or two so then example one would be this one two would be that one if you don't see all the outputs that example your interface has six outputs you only see two what do you do you go and select configure it opens up the preferences and now you can just go to the output configurations there and it will give you option of all of them so example you can just click from here and i now make sure that i have the mono output selected because i need now to make them separate but i also have the stereo output selected yes also by the way you can also name them like yee, if you liked <laughs> in this purpose of this whole thing i will show you q on my left ear and what all the audience will hear on the right ear. So now watching this tutorial, it would be good if you're wearing headphones or you are in front of really good speakers, just so that you can differentiate the left and right. Yes. So I will go and select one there and I will select two there. Now, if I play, the main song comes only from your right ear, doesn't it? So for live performance purposes, we can now listen something with our left ear that the audience doesn't hear. So this is such a good way of for you to select clips without audience knowing or find preview new clips that you would like to put into the session. Okay, how do we do that? So we have now put one and two there and now we're going to go to this part. So this is the cue volume. So that's the volume of how loudly we can hear anything in here. So let's example go to the left top corner and we activate the click from there. Now you can hear a click on your left ear. I'm gonna take the volume off from the main. 
now it's really loud, now it's quiet. So that's the volume of the left ear. So example, you could have a loop that all, all the audience here, you activate that and you can hear the click on the left ear and you can start finger drumming or playing something on the top of it. But the audience doesn't know that you're actually hearing a click same time. Hey, in this point, if you do want to see more of this kind of stuff and more of this, then please subscribe to this channel and hit the hit bell icon. Okay, let's get back to that. Let's go and click this button here. It says solo, but when you click it, it turns into Q. Whoa. This is so cool, because now if you go to these main tracks, you can see that there's headphones that has appeared to these tracks. We can monitor with our Q what's happening on the track without the audience hearing it. But there's a couple things you need to do for that to work. Firstly, we need to activate that so that we can make sure that we can hear it here. And now because the track is activated and the volume is up and I press play, we will both hear it. The audience will hear it and you will hear it. So now we, we need to do either two things. We can deactivate the track from the number. And now only I can hear it. But as soon as I press this, Whoa, they can hear it. So the whole point is that I can go between example this track and this one and trying to find a one, uh, a sound that I like without the audience knowing that I'm browsing sounds. And then when I found a sound, I can just activate the track and the audience will hear it. Another way is that I just take down the volume of the track. Nothing. Yes. So then when I found a track that I want to add, then I can be just like, ooh yeah, bring it in, bring it in. So good. And example for that, you know what's really good, is that we can actually MIDI map anything, any controllers to do with Q. Example, the fader here, or this Q button, or anything that we want to. Another thing is that if I want to, so let's say this is going and I want to add a new sample to this song, to this great song, but I don't want the audience to know that I'm actually browsing new songs. You know, it has this little headphone logo. That what happens is that now if I preview anything here, I cannot hear much because the volume is down. I bring the volume up on the cue. I can hear it on my left ear. So let's say I'm playing this track. It's here. I can hear the click here. I go Oh, this conga is awesome. So I'm just gonna bring it in here. I can still see if I wanna just have it in. So I can still hear it from here because the volume is down and I can start bringing it in. And now you can hear it on this ear as well. Sometimes I find that it's easier to have a drum beat behind you or a group behind you while you're playing, example on a stage, because it helps you to be on rhythm better than boom, 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 boom. So what I like to do is, you know, take a cool groove like that one, put that there. I take down the volume, I hit the, the headphones icon. So then basically I can just listen to this on my left ear start playing whatever I want to play and I already have the groove in my mind. So that's something that I personally really, really find useful. It just works, you know, it just really works. Okay, next what I want to show you is that how can I create cue mixes for the player. So let's say I'm not the only one who needs a cue. So let's say I'm performing with the band or I'm recording a band. We can use this cue method for all band members and for yourself if you like. How do we do that? We need to use return tracks for that. Let's create a return track. So either I right click into this empty area or I go to the menus blah, 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 or alt command and T. Ta-da! We have a return track called C. So let's say that's the drummer's headphone mix. Drummer I don't know why I'm yelling that with the capital letters. If I would like to create a Q mix for every single player, then I would need to have much more outputs. But, uh, and you would go and select it from here. So you go to the return track and you go to where the output is, X out. 
external out and under there you're going to get the list of everything you need so in this point i will just have it as one because that's where we put the mix in okay so the next thing is i'm going to go and add the instruments that i want to hear in this mix so i'm on a little bit of kick so i go to this track the kick track and i will add exactly as i would add return fx so i would go to the c add a little bit of that and then a little bit of that. There we go. And let's have a listen. Oh, I need to play the tracks. <laughs> so if I now take down the main output, which is the audience output, so we can hear kick, click and synth. There we go, and it's working, 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 working. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe, please hit the, please hit the bell icon, please let me know down in the comments what you thought about all this video, did this help? How do you use Q? Let me know down in the comments, please uh, come back next week because I post every single Sunday and this week, especially, I'm gonna post also on Wednesday. So see you actually already on Wednesday and then see you every Sunday after that. Anyway, see ya, bye, have a good day, bye.